Keita Williams, your favorite success bully. Success bully is an elite accountability practice that is committed to helping you crush your goals. I am a professional butt kicker. I am so excited about August Action. We're continuing this month to put more action behind achieving our big, hairy, audacious goal. I'm thrilled to have the founders of Davies and Dixon, Mackenzie Davies and Kelsey Dixon on as guests. Davies and Dixon is a bi-coastal digital marketing and brand communication agency. Fear has many disguises and wardrobe changes. It can present as the fear of getting started, the fear of failure. Those two things we often have well thought out plans for what we'll do if we fail all these reasons we won't get started. Uh, We have to get a job. We may move to a new place. Uh, We could go back to school. We have all these contingencies in place for that possible failure. But what about this whole new type of fear? What happens when you succeed? What do you do if you're successful? Mackenzie and Kelsey get transparent about that shift in fear from the fear to jump in, the fear of failure to the newfound fear of success. They also talk about defining their co-founder relationship and developing new confidence along the way. So when we started the company, and even now, I mean, we've just called in favors or called in to ask questions, and people are willing to listen to us, and you don't forget those people because you're grateful. And they all had different skill sets, as Kel said, which was really important to us when we um, built the business, having the right people in the seats. Yeah, diverse um perspectives too was helpful and mentorship is a two-way street so anytime someone gave us advice we would make sure to follow up on that and say hey we used your advice and this is the result and then ask any follow-up questions or anything that came after that but I know that was always received very well to know and it was empowering it felt good I think to the mentor to say like oh wow she actually took my advice and actually did it and Mm -hmm. now she's exceeding so it just it helps the relationship grow how have you been navigating the the fear roller coaster that comes with entrepreneurship? Wine. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. Answer is wine. <laughs> For us, early on, we had people because that, we were scared to start the business. It was not you know flowers and butterflies. It was horrifying. You leave your entire career that you've built up until this point, and you're like, yeah, I'm just gonna jump. Hopefully, I can fly, and hopefully, you can. But it was hor- absolutely horrifying. And the problem for us was it wasn't the fear of failure that got us because we, someone told us very quickly, if you fail, you're going to go get a job. Why? Because that's life. And B, you attempted building something, and that is cool. And, and that shows your initiative. That shows your drive. That shows a lot about who you are as a person to at least attempt it. So if you attempt it and you fail, guess what? Go apply for another job. You'll be just fine. Go or figure something out. And I was like, you know, you're right. <laughs> and you I'm still gonna, won because you tried you, it. Exactly. And I'm not going to, I just, I'm not going to be crippled by that. For us, it was what happens if you succeed. Kelsey, tell me more about that. It was an interesting was it crippling to feel successful. We didn't feel successful for a while, but it was the the anticipation of, oh my gosh, what if this actually works? Then what does that mean for for life and for everything? And it's like... It's it's an interesting thought to look at it from that other perspective. Because I think you're nervous to jump into something because you're like, wow, there's so many options here. And one of them is that this could be wildly successful. I think that's so interesting that there's the fear of failure, but then there's that fear of being successful. Like, what what if this actually works? Mm-hmm. That was a scarier fear. That was a scarier fear. Yeah. Because we didn't have a, we had a solution if we failed. Right. We did not have a solution. <laughs> if we, <laughs> like, like, if we win, <laughs> right. what do we do? It was yeah. such an open, just mystery. Because sometimes it's fun just to dream and it's fun to stay in that dream. And when you start making the dream a reality, it can be scary. And it's true. So what have been some of the challenges to your friendship as co-founders? Not enough wine. <laughs> The answer is always lying. <laughs> <laughs> well, as co-founders, we, I always joke, too, because at the time when we started the business, she was engaged. And I said, Tyler, I married her first by the state of Washington. <laughs> um, and it, it really is. It's a relationship. And it requires work, like all relationships do. It requires tapping into emotions and understanding what makes people tick and what makes them, like, really upset and burnt out and all those different things to be able to play off of each other's 
um, ups and downs. We did, in the beginning, we set a lot of goals and we really focused on both professional and personal goals. Okay. Where do we see this business headed? But then also, where do you see yourself fitting in within this larger piece of the business? And also, what do you want in life? Yeah. yeah. Because there was a freedom to, you know, building this so we could have a voice and actually make an impact for clients. But it's also, there's a freedom of, you get to choose how you live your life at this point and what do you want? And we realized very quickly, we wanted very different things personally and but that makes us fight professionally to make us we and we respect one another so we want to make it happen for each other i think that's so important for entrepreneurs that like we get so wrapped up in the business goals that we lose sight of our personal goals and what does this mean for my life outside of this business some days i feel like it is my life (laughs) but it is uh, (laughs) it is it's a blend but keeping that balance yeah. Um, as your business has grown and you two have kind of uh, grown up with your business, literally, l- literally grown up with your business, how has leadership changed for you? I'm not drinking as much. <laughs> <laughs> wine. I'm joking. Oh, I'm joking. Answer is wine. <laughs> We've always put people first, but in the beginning it was just the two of us. So that was definitely a learned trait um, as more people came on. And the obligation became different as well. It wasn't just to the two of us. There was a lot more wonderful pressure of saying, now this needs to succeed because I have a team behind me and I have an obligation and a dedication to them also. So leadership to me has changed in the fact that I've, I've, it's become more than just me. And it's, it's putting my efforts mean something more than just for my personal life. I agree. I'd say leadership has changed for me in a confidence manner. Um, to be very transparent, day one was I had no confidence that this was, and not because of Kelsey. It was more I had no confidence in myself. And here I am three years later, and I feel confident because we've gotten through year one, mm-hmm. which is hard, and then year two, which is hard, and here we are in year three, killing it. And and I mean that from a, I'm proud, and I am. If we were to crumble tomorrow, I would know we put the best foot forward and there's nothing more that I can be proud of, of the team, of, of us, of our clients, of anything. And so for me, there's a confidence that has slowly been building and I'm finally like, I'm on top of my mountain and it feels good. Yeah. All right. So what's your hag? We talk about the big, hairy, audacious goal. What's your hag for the next few months, ladies? Because, you know, I'll follow up on it and harass you about it. It's, 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 it's <laughs> yes. messy after this. <laughs> <laughs> be hag for the next few months to cl- gain two clients a month okay um ideally in the next six months that'd be great two more clients I mean, a month. we're looking to build our team too and bring on at least one more person maybe okay. a couple so in 90 days we're gonna follow up on this so just managing expectations i'll harass you uh because that <laughs> that's like this thing i do <laughs> i love it hold us accountable kita i love it it's this thing i'll do all right, last lightning round question. What are you reading personally and professionally? Personally, option B, Sheryl Sandberg. It's on the list. I'm about to start it. I'm pumped. And, oh, drop the ball. It's a, <laughs> drop the ball is the other one. Fantastic. Just finished it and love it. And also I've been doing podcasts successfully, Thanks, for sure. Obviously. Oh and, oh, and by the way, my mom loves your podcast. <laughs> Total <laughs> side. Total I, I'm a hit with moms. I don't know if you all know this. Uh, not so much my mom, but uh, I'm a hit with moms. <laughs> Shout out to Mama Davies. Oh, yeah. She loves you. <laughs> I love it. I would also say Style Your Mind podcast is phenomenal. And then um, lately I've gotten into Hello Freedom, which I like that as well. Terry Cole. Kelsey, what about you? Uh, I love the Zero to Travel podcast. And the reason I got into it is because when we started this company, we wanted to be location independent. Mm -hmm. We want to have the freedom and the flexibility in today's world to be digital nomads and to travel. Yes. And if you follow me on Instagram, there's pictures of that I look like I travel every single day. I don't, but I can work on the car ride there. Like if I'm taking an eight hour road trip, that's my eight hour work day. Right. And that is a wonderful thing in a wonderful world that we live in. So we really wanted to capitalize on that, provide quality service and do all the things and keep accountable for everything that we do while being on the road and doing awesome things. So Zero to Travel really inspires me to do and build a lifestyle around that and and building a digital community. So it's a lot about entrepreneurship and a lot about traveling. And I love hacks and all those good things as well. 
so excited to continue focusing on August action to help you achieve your big, hairy, audacious goal. Don't let the fear of success and positive outcomes slow you down. Keep moving forward with momentum. Do at least one thing that gets you closer to your goal. You don't have to be completely devoid of fear or fearless. Do it in spite of the fear, no matter what kind of fear it is, whether it's the fear to get started, the fear to keep going, the fear of being successful. Thank you again to the founders of Davies and Dixon, Mackenzie Davies and Kelsey Dixon for sharing all manner of interesting nuggets. Uh, for more information, you can find them at DaviesandDixon.com. We're produced with love by Large Media. That's L-A-R-J media.com. Don't go big, go large. Keep up with my antics on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Success Bully. You can also check me out at successbully.com. My personal BHAG is a race to 10,000 to build my presence on the interwebs. I would love for you to like, share, and write reviews. I'm Keita Williams.